Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing safe. Thank you so much for love and support. Today's topic. Let me take up an important question. Yes, it's all about managing the product team. As part of the product management series, let me share my thoughts around this. Let's begin. One of the most common questions, I think most of the product managers, you can pick up from any of the large companies or small scale industries, is how to manage their managers. Most of the time, I mean, we ourselves come across this. So we frustrate with our managers. It's not like, you know, we don't like them, but the way we feel is something like, uh, you know, the stance is different, right? It's, it's like the, the stance keeps shifting, isn't it? I think most of you guys are agreeing with my views. Because what happens, each of those managers, they give them different and conflicting directions every week to the team. Because it's, it's, it's always two steps forward and one step back. If you consider any of those big companies, you come across a lot of influences and stakeholders because they are the one who is taking the company to go forward in a single direction, right? Because they are the one who is managing the product and they know what is the true challenge behind this. I think going in a single direction in a long enough will be a different uh, challenge for my view. But yes, there are maybe different reasons for every company uh, because I don't want to go and comment on you know those things. So it's not just you and your manager who has to be in the same pace. Your managers, manager also, and who are all be part of that supply chain in terms of the product delivery, the product launch, vendors, other suppliers, everyone who ever have you know uh, having the part of their you know presence in the game, right? I think they should be in the same line. Because sometimes what happens, there are outside influences as well. Maybe you have to talk about uh, your competitive presence, uh, maybe technology changing, uh, you know, on a day in day out, and there might be major and acquisitions, and you will also have your own budget and other financial issues and constraints, right? So I think these are all very, very, very matured enough to tackle these things if you are having a large scale industries, right? So at the same time, you need to understand how do we leverage the underlying resources of your company. I think they are the one who is going to create an impact of your product, isn't it? Right? So I think every every small company and startups, this challenge are really, really exist. I mean, you can't avoid, you know, on a day or overnight, right? But let's understand because the more and more the size of the company grows, it's very difficult to handle. I think, uh, uh, you know, you need to follow certain smaller number of ways or techniques to manage these teams. So let me share my thoughts around this. So there are some tips, you know, from my view, how do we manage and how do we make ourselves better? One, it's all about churning. Do you have a plan or do you know how to measure the churning? I think when I say churning, it's it's all about, there's a lot of things. I think it can be a rework or it can be changes in the plans. A lot of times these are all cause a lot of frustrations, right? When you feel in the first place. But understand one thing, you can't or you cannot expect the churn to go down to zero. Because you you have to constantly, you know, try yourself to reduce that. So how do we you know, do that by, first you need to get the awareness, right? So then you start measuring the you know, churning. For example, you know, uh, do you have a plan in, in terms of you know, how do we, or how much we progress uh, uh, you know, spent in terms of weekly, monthly, quarterly, right? So that's about you know, forwarding the progress. So do you have the plan in that? Or maybe you know you are more aware of the level of you know what kind of churning you know i should do it but it's all about planning right so when you're scheduling a, any of the projects you need to understand how much of the time you need to devote as a product manager uh, you know in terms of responding to those changes at the same time how do we you know adjust ourselves in terms of the efforts right so 
if you understand all these things i think it will help you to manage your stress and you will be more you know uh, accurately focusing on the schedule and i think these are all uh, you know uh, ways to which you can improve the uh, you know uh, the measuring the churns you know when you dealing with you know these kind of you know teams communication style communication style is nothing but understand one thing uh, not all product managers are also same at the same time managers are also not same either but what happens some managers they prefer to you know focus on very little detail you know on a continuous basis but others you know they don't want to bother unless you know there is a an escalation or there is an issue where you need you know your senior managers you know help right so i think they they are more uh, uh, prefer to get the updates in writing or status reports or could be in the you know offline chat you know uh, if there is any serious issue right so i think you need to determine what is the what is the style through which you manage uh, your team and uh, you know to your best at the same time and what is your uh, you know uh, preferred way of you know communication style so that the frequency and the style you know really matters when you're interacting with your teams see when i say uh, pre meeting it's it's uh, uh, let's understand most of the product companies they mostly having a lot of meetings too many i think right so i think you you also notice this but because you know you have a lot of influences a lot of stakeholders you know your company because you have to go and get the uh, you know approvals you know and every checkpoints and they have to review the meetings uh, you need to keep them uh, informed and you know you want to track all these things right i think i think you 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 need to understand you know where to actually conduct the you know real meetings before you actually you know uh, meeting with your stakeholders or steering co meetings or whatever it is right i think you need to take off you know step back and give them the brief before the meeting uh, whoever you think that you know they are the key influencers or stakeholders prior to your actual meeting i think that is what you know my suggestion and give them the preview of you know what is your points you know you listen to their issues you understand you know uh, how do you ensure that you know they will be getting on board uh, if that meeting happens and if you really do well right i think you will you will get your uh, you know approvals or whatever you know your action items you know uh, you definitely get it very quick you know without any surprises right i think uh, this is very important you need to do a lot of pre work before the actual meetings with the stakeholders recommendations recommendations what i wanted to be you know share my view here is uh most of the you know managers they wanted to see your recommendations how do we solve the problems rather than bringing that you know issues right so i think uh, you really need to understand what is the size of the problem and what are the different alternatives and how do we you know tackle that right it's all with you know understand your recommendation and what is the rational behind this i think that is what most of the people has to be you know uh, very serious about it when you really managing your teams it's all about recommendations and understand the solution not about the you know always discussing on the issue right so end of the day we need to get that you know problem to be solved when i say data and facts uh, when you wanted to deal with any managers especially your reporting or senior managers uh, you need to always remember one thing you know your job is to just to provide the data and facts right because it has to be in line with whatever the decisions you need to get the approval from your senior stakeholders i think you need to have all this data otherwise it's very difficult to take the certain decisions that's what i feel right so if you're going to make certain decisions based on some opinions i think uh, you know I, i don't know how it really matters but you have to do lot of you know homework and see when you have a real data collected with you and uh, that's that's how you know your your uh, recommendation or the way you are approached to the uh, stakeholders will be very clear right it's based on the facts not on the individual opinions so so please be clear on your data and your facts emails oh this is another you know important one at the same time it's a common mistake most of the product managers so when i say shorter emails because you know they like to write long very detailed emails to your managers i think you know anyone can get frustrated isn't it right when they wanted to uh you know they don't want to to read or they don't want to respond because you got frustrated i think you need to understand one thing uh because they will get you know probably hundreds of mails in a day, every day so they are looking for very short and precise to the point you know when you are really talking about communication because the more senior the person you are sending to i think you need to make the shorter you know email 
at the same time you know uh, 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 give them the brief and give them the precise view you know what is that that you are going to communicate and you know uh, uh, need their attention or some certain kind of you know approval or decisions on your you know emails so i think you know please make a note of you know the way you send the emails has to be a shorter and smart enough evangelist when i say evangelist it's uh, it it plays a very big part of you know product manager's job because you need to evangelize your product across your company do you agree with me but only few of the product managers they take it very serious because they think they should do it as simple as it because if you evangelize effectively everything will become very easy because you are working with lots you know working streams or scrum teams or whatever you know the streams in your company so if they know what you are really doing and they are really excited about what products you know that we are launching for our company i think they are always ready any time you know they will much more likely you know to help you when you really need them so so be evangelize the way how you manage your product just to conclude my final thoughts around this i hope you understand my views in terms of how do we manage your product teams at your best understand one thing every small company and you take large size uh, in organization or the startups i think these challenges are still exist it's all how you manage and how you tackle it that's what matters right so as i said i think these are some of my tips and from my view will help you to solve some of your problems but again you know these are all still sometimes you know these are all you know uh, i will say up you know in front these challenges are very substantial don't you think so and they don't go away as it is and do whatever best that you can do to handle uh, mitigate you know these kind of you know issues when you're handling large scale you know a uh, teams from the product point of view i hope these ways will help you to manage them in a better ways thank you so much for your time thanks for listening please like and subscribe to my channel thank you